There we go. All right. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode two of the Sminify podcast. You guys get the point. It's a podcast. <laughs> yes. Just like all the other ones. We've already done this. We've messed up. I messed up the audio, so we've already done this intro once. So we, we don't want to do it again and act fake. But anyway. All right. Let's cut this shit. Let's get to it. <laughs> today, I'm here with Kyle Ferrari. What's up, man? Hello. How you doing? So I already told the story. Good. I already told the story, but we'll tell it quick again. So I came across your live stream. I was like, good live stream. You commented. And you checked out my content. You said, let's do a podcast. And here we are doing a podcast. So Yeah, we're doing a podcast. What's good, dude? What's good? All right. So. Um, yeah. So I have some questions about you, oh, if you, you unless you want to go first. Yeah. Uh, you can go. Do it. I'm ready. So how old are, how old are you? I'm just curious. 17. Okay. And where do you live? Uh, well, I live in a small town named Oaks in North Dakota. So. Oh, okay. that's, does that surprise you in any way that North Dakota usually people oh. just freak out when they hear North Dakota <laughs> literally I'm just like geographically challenged so I honestly have no idea where that is let's see because so. wait where are you from Florida Florida so like I'm on the other side of the state from you so like I am at the top I'm basically in Canada and you're down in Florida ah like, okay so so that's how much people know about us you don't even know where we are <laughs> yeah sad day. there's like <laughs> Uh, there's not even a million people in the state, so just to put mm-hmm. that into reference, how many? And like, you got some cities in Florida with well over a million people. So that's mm-hmm. <laughs> anything else? <laughs> um, no, that's about it. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so now some basic context. All right, so um, basically, this is gonna be like an interview form format. So like, I've never conducted an interview before, so this might be a little sketchy, but. I'm just going to ask you some questions. That's you can answer them how you sketchy. feel. Sketchy. The more sketchy, the better. That's a bit like, as I said in the first episode, we're not professional at all. So we just we just get into it, and that makes it a little special when we're not just yeah, yeah. fake and industrial and all that. Mm-hmm. All right. So, like, I watched your vlogs, your videos, and I'm just, mm-hmm. I've never seen nothing like them. Like, what are those robots doing? Like, what, like, oh, what are okay. those? Things? I've never seen anything like that whatsoever. So, so, this is actually like a worldwide competition. It's called Vex. Really? And, teams from of course around the world are able to just compete in it and there's like a certain challenge they announce at the beginning of every game season that everyone competes in for an entire year and at the end of the year everyone can everyone who qualifies through their state will go to what's called the world championship in kentucky and usually like it's the most amazing experience ever to go to worlds and the world champions like everybody's everyone wants to be the world champion but unfortunately this year with uh the coronavirus going uh, around yeah. they had to cancel the world championship and everyone's very depresso about That's it right. yeah we can get into the coronavirus later but like okay i'm still confused like what do you do like what do the robots do like they just pick up blocks or something i was i was very confused while watching like yeah so the objective of this game there's many different games but the one for this year is to just grab those cubes and stack them in their Um, scoring zones and and then the other way you get points is by multipliers which you might have seen those towers that you just can chuck cubes into and you noticed how the cubes have different colors if you were to chuck a purple cube into one of those towers and you had a purple cube in the scoring zone that cube would now be worth two points instead of one so do you like and then two you can go what's up you good you can keep going so so both of the there's four teams that will show up to each match and two teams will face off with the other two teams and there's a red and blue alliance and at the end of the and the match is two minutes long and whoever has more points at the end of the match wins essentially so you like design the robots yourself or like how does that work you put them together or where do you get them from like i'm i'm confused so it's called vex i don't know if i mentioned that yet yeah and it's a like i said a worldwide competition and they are pre-made parts that you buy off their website yeah but you modify all of them so like they come a certain length and then you can cut them to whatever shape you want and there's certain things you're limited by you can only have eight motors you so like motors are the things that move everything obviously yeah (laughs) and you can only have one battery you can only make your robot 18 by 18 inches so like if it's past 18 by 18 it's illegal and you'll be disqualified 
Wow, is that, is but that like, you're allowed to expand as much as you want. So like you could expand out to 36 inches or more after the match starts. Is vexing like a big thing in Florida? I've never ever heard of it or seen it. Yeah, it's. Like, I mean, for me, it's a pretty big thing. It, it's been a huge part of my life for the past three or four years. I can't remember exactly, but it. As soon as I got started with it, I was hooked, man. I. And I kind of sucked my first year, but I was, thanks to like the help of all my, um, my parents and my mentor and stuff, and like all the people who believed in me along the way, I was able to win the state championship two years in Jesus. a row. Oh, Jesus! I didn't know. It. Okay, I'm speaking to royalty <laughs> here. I better bow down. All right, <laughs> nice job. Dude. Like, uh, so you control them yourselves and stuff, or like, what makes a robot better from one year to the next? Because couldn't you like, if you have the winning robot, couldn't you just keep it the same and use it next year, or like? Is it like more remote so, controls? Like, like I said, there's new games for every year. So oh. this year was the the cube game called Tower Takeover. Yeah. Last year was called Turning Point, and you had to shoot balls at flags and um, flip these caps on the ground. And so last year, um, it was really interesting. You you had to like I had a flywheel, which is like a mm -hmm. a wheel that spins insanely fast. Yeah. And it just launches balls at the flags and stuff. Oh, that's awesome so i see so like the competitions change every year so the robots would basically be like useless that's interesting right it sounds really interesting but like i'm terrible at that stuff i'm not like mechanically inclined at all so dude i, would not I was so bad i, do I don't think that. you have any idea how bad i was when i first started like like i work on a farm and like my dad's a farmer and he just sees a problem he can just fix it i don't have that ability at all i'm so bad at doing that it's something i wish I'm... i had but i can't do it at all assembling stuff well, and doing that i'm not if you really at it. wish you were good at it then there's millions of ways to learn if you really wanted to there's nothing yeah, stopping I, you yeah i know i try but i just i kind of just feel like it's something you're born with like you could just look at that and you can just fix it like i i can't do it i just look at it and i i can't think of a way to fix it it, just, it makes me mad but well i think it might come down to the fact that you don't understand maybe the fundamentals of something first you're probably seeing a a big problem <laughs> and you're taking on too much information at once and you're like i don't understand anything about this if you start like doing like more basic stuff first and work your way up i'm sure you'd become yeah, that, better over time yeah that could be it like join vex competitions i'm sure that would actually help me a lot but like all the towns are so small where i'm from we we there's no way we could do something like that there's just not enough people there it be is enough, so much fun though there like, would be not yeah, enough support i honestly when i did vex I I was like, what comes after? <laughs> I was like, my life's going to be over once Vex is over. Is there no is, professional league or is there anything after? You're like, there is Vex U, which is college Vex U. Or college Vex, I should say. <laughs> nice. And then that, that's and, it. There's no big Yeah, leagues. but it's not the same. And I think it's because the competition's just not as competitive in college as it is in high school. Just mm -hmm. not as as many college yeah. teams competing because they're moving on to more advanced engineering fields. Because Vex is not a very complex robotics program, in my opinion. <laughs> it's bet. like big boy Legos, in my opinion. <laughs> you probably just like roasted a whole bunch of people, calling it easy. I mean, I'm roasting having, myself. They're having a hard time. No, it's all good. Yeah. All right. So, like, I want to talk about your videos, man, because like your videos are very well done. So, like. Uh, I appreciate that. Like, okay, like my only feedback is like sometimes the camera's a little shaky. That's honestly it. Other than yeah, that, they're, they're very well, well done. So well, and that that last video was like I don't know if I mentioned it in this recording or the first one, but I thought that video was extremely rough, and there were a lot of things that I did so bad. But honestly, I was like I could go back and re-record this whole thing, <laughs> or I'm like I could right. post this, yeah. and only a few people might care. And I'd ra I was like, I also have the factor that I could look back and see how bad I was yeah. in the past and go. then appreciate how far I've come. So I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm just going to post this one and see what happens. So. Right, like, when did you start editing videos? Like, because I mean, I started first, way back in like 2013. So <laughs> the first video I edited was when I was in college, like, I want to say four months ago, something like that really only four months they're pretty good for four months what <laughs> and uh, you can go you're good 
It was, I only edited one video. Well, actually, I edited like two videos. The second one was pretty bad though. But the, the first one was, I literally just on a whim, I was like, let me, I had this really crazy idea to make a YouTube video. It was like this whole skit thing. And it was like in, in preparation for Borderlands 3 coming out, but it was very sarcastic and funny. And I'm like, nice. I want to, I want to do it. And I created a whole script for it. And then next day I'm like, dude, and then I'm like, okay, I got to get some props. And then the next day, um, I, I was like, okay, dude, let's do it. And I got my friend to do it. And we were just having a ball, just recording mm -hmm. everything. Yep. And then the next day I spent the entire day editing it instead of doing my schoolwork. Yeah, <laughs> All that is fun. so relatable. That is so relatable. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Like that's one of my favorite parts about videos is like, just like the end result, just looking back at it, like. Like, I know if I enjoy watching a video I just made, it's probably pretty good. But, like, editing the video I don't find to be a whole lot of fun. But just, like, watching the finished product gives me a whole lot of satisfaction. And I love, like, trying to entertain others. So that's that's my favorite part about it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think the reason why my second video sucked compared to my first one mm -hmm. was because I knew the first video was funny. And I knew that all the editing I was putting in would be worth it because yeah. I had I was promoting it to a ton of people. And I knew a lot of people were going to watch it. I ended up getting like 350 or 400 views on my first video or something. Oh, that's, that's not bad. And <laughs> that's I, I was pretty good. happy with that. That's and like I said, I'm, I was part of the Vex community for a while. A lot of the people that are still in Vex, they kind of look up to me a lot and I'm yeah. still friends with a lot of them. And I was telling them I was releasing a video. And so what I did was I hopped into Discord and we were all in a voice chat talking with each other. I'm like, okay, guys, I'm dropping it right now. Wow. And we all watched it together and they're all laughing so much. Oh, and I'm man, like, this is great. So that's like the exact opposite of me. Like you can just like walk up to people and start conversation conversations. I like, I, don't know, I just have a hard time telling people that I like just posted a video. And when like people are watching my video right in front of me, I like, I don't know, I like get like embarrassed almost no matter how good it is. I don't know why. I don't know why I feel that way, but. I just hate it when people watch my content right in front of me. So, yeah, that's... I, I don't know why that, that is. That's my... Okay, I have a problem with that as well, but not in the same way. I... Well, yeah, I have a problem with people watching it right in front of me as well. Like, if <laughs> if my friend's over and he's watching my video, I'll get, like, a little anxious or something. Yeah, I, I hate but, the feeling of hearing my own voice. But more than that, uh, more than that, it's not even about hearing my voice, honestly. I'm just worried about them critiquing it um yeah, that too. but my biggest worry is uh when i'm editing not not like when it's done but when i'm actually editing because i'm i still live at my parents house currently with mm -hmm. plans to move out eventually but anyways um when i'm editing either my mom will walk in my room or ask me a question and i just kind of like pause the video like not playing anything i don't want anyone to hear <laughs> yes. what i'm doing yeah that's... and if my brother mm -hmm. if my brother walks in then i'll just be like um could you go away, please? <laughs> yeah, like I've like been talking to my friends in like PS4 like parties, and I can't even edit a video then because like I just hate when they hear the video through my mic or something. It just, ugh, I, I can't do it. I don't know why that is, but I just have to make them in private. So I think that's how I get the best result anyway. Yeah, I'm. All the best work is done when no one else is watching, and that's my that's, opinion. But I, I can, I yes, I can definitely agree with that. Like school work, I can't do anything at school. I, I have to come home and just grind it out. Too many distractions no. at school. Well, my schoolwork always sucks. So, <laughs> I mean, I I got pretty good grades. I think I I got like A's and B's, but I always just finessed everything. I most of the time I just got someone to like send me most of the work for well, yeah, me. That's that's everybody. That's yeah, that's everybody. everybody. Especially in like today, in... like it's like my science teacher hands out a paper. I'll just type in the title of the worksheet and I'll just find the answers online. It's really it's not that hard. So I mean, yeah, we, that's why like, I had this uh, like grades. I had this religion class. Oh wait, hold on, oh, religion class. Here we go. <laughs> get, yeah, I had this in. religion class, <laughs> and everyone who may end up watching this that goes to my old school will understand this. Um, literally, we did what was called like project-based learning and everything, project -based and right. we just have giant projects we have every week. But the thing was, they were so lazy in their grading that the question wow. would be like, uh, what was the story of Moses about? And you would just like copy and paste something from the internet and you would get a hundred on it. Okay. Yeah. I can relate to that. My history teacher, like he's an awesome dude. Like I love him, but like 
he's kind of just lazy. Like he'll just hand out like one assignment every week and he'll just give us like a week to do it. And it's not that hard. And then grading it, he'll just look at it and he'll just call it good. So I can relate mm-hmm. to that, but I mean, he, I, those are the good teachers. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Like, the grades, good teachers, the grades, good teachers are great. Yeah. But like grades aren't a reflection of like how smart you are. They're really just how hard you want to try. That's about it. That's my, it's philosophy. not even how hard you want to try. It's how hard you want to try at school. There's a big difference in my opinion. Yeah, and like, Okay, yeah like the knowledge you learn at school like what like when are you gonna need that like you're graduated that's exactly right? why that's exactly why i dropped out so, um okay so you're graduated from high school yeah i'm graduated from high school and, and i went to college for a semester and, and now i'm home well you just realized you were like wasting your time or why not yeah essentially i i went to embry riddle aeronautical university for mechanical engineering yes i went to an aeronautical school for mechanical engineering and (laughs) on honestly i was just a i don't i don't want to say bad words on your profanity or anything but i'm (laughs) just gonna say i was a little bitch and i didn't really think about what would like i said before about vex i didn't think about my like what came after i kind of always thought nothing came after vex it just felt like everything to me which it was at the time really? and when it was over i and i didn't even think about college for a while i had applied for college but in all honesty my mom did most of the work for getting me applied to college so mm-hmm. like it didn't even really feel like i was applying to college and i know it's pretty trash that my mom did all the work for me and i'm completely agreeing with that that was horrible um and that's another thing I realized about myself was that I'm too dependent on my parents because they've just been doing everything for me my whole life. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, when I two weeks before college was actually starting, I it finally hit me. I was going to college and I'm like, really? Oh, my God, so like, I'm going to college. So no and excitement but, but at all. What, like, yeah, like not a, even no excitement. I was like, like, but why? My older brother, I think he was ready to leave the house by the time. He went to college so that's interesting yeah. it's very different like what are your plans so, right now all right so my plans right now um i'm honestly just doing this youtube channel for fun yeah but with the intention of it growing over a long period of time so that i can continue to have fun and make some like make some of my money off of youtube in the future but not having it be my main source of income because it is rather um, inconsistent and unreliable in my opinion. Yeah, definitely, it's always changing. Yeah, dude, I relate to that 100%. That's kind of my goal, to be honest, as well. Like, I just Mm -hmm. wanna like kind of build a little community and like, we can just hang out and like. Yeah, for real, that's that's why I really liked your channel announcement thing, because I liked your no BS (laughs) or like, no clickbait or whatever. (laughs) And I know I I had like clickbait in one of my videos, like the Drake thing. (laughs) It was more of a joke than clickbait, honestly. Sorry. It's just we'll, we'll yeah. let it slide. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> but, uh, right. I'm trying to deviate from click click clickbait as much as possible. Yeah, I, I just try to not put all capitals in the title and exclamation points everywhere and stuff. <laughs> I just I try not to do that. <laughs> I hate that so much and that's like the new meta of YouTube. A lot of people are doing that unfortunately. And it works, but I can't do it. So, well uh, see the thing is I think clickbait is fine, but only in certain circumstances. So there's two types of clickbait. There's the clickbait where you're leading them to content that's not actually there. So like, for example, I just uh, bought this Lamborghini is the title. Yeah. And in the video, you're, you're like leasing it or something. Yeah, or they're, or, like, they're just looking like, at it, they're not even buying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're just deceiving you in the thumbnail to click on the video. Now, there's multiple problems with this. Not only are you being deceptive and disingenuous to your audience, yeah. it's going to create a problem for you too in the future when they see another video from you that says something other crazy like, uh, I just went underwater for five hours straight. Oh, yeah. And they're going to be like, this is definitely not it's legit. Like the boy and cried wolf gonna... story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't know if he's telling the truth or not. So yeah, I now, never thought about that. I, I hate to keep cutting you off, but I'm just like... No, that's all good. You got a lot to say. Let it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mr. Beast, for example, he oh, yeah. I would consider his thumbnails pretty clickbait, but the difference is he actually delivers with every single video he posts. Yeah, definitely. Like, 
he when he says we're doing a Lamborghini race, he does a Lamborghini. <laughs> and See, I'll look at some of his. Um, and and that's why um he just gets so many views and he gets he literally gets 10 million views on every single video for the geez, past it's, year it's like 20 million now it's insane i couldn't even imagine yeah it's, and he, on most of his videos he gets around 30 to 50 million he's deserved it too i mean oh so, no exactly yeah, like i see what you're talking about like this thumbnail right here it's like surprising my girlfriend with a hundred thousand roses and they're just like sitting and you can't see anything but roses just covering them like that's, that's yeah that's clickbait but like he actually did that so you see people have the wrong assumption that clickbait equals bad but if you think about the source of like the 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 core of the word clickbait you're just baiting someone into clicking on your video but baiting doesn't essentially mean you're lying to them you're just enticing them to click on it mm -hmm. it's develops a a bad connotation over time though because it's people are so clickbaiting into watching these content these videos that don't actually have the content they're expecting yeah it's, if that makes sense yeah that's a very deep <laughs> description of clickbait i guess i never really thought about it that deep but <laughs> i just saw it as like misleading yeah. title i don't like it misleading thumbnail i don't like it but you really put a lot of thought uh, into i that. think <laughs> i think a little too deeply into a lot of things <laughs> that was nice which is good i all right so i'm gonna change the topic here and All right. I'm going to ask you, okay, so like I take a leadership class right now mm -hmm. and in the leadership class, we're going to, we're, we're conducting interviews and we've picked out these 10 questions to ask somebody and like everybody in the class is like asking like administration people and like local people. And that's cool. But like, I think it'd be awesome if I asked you these questions and interviewed you. All right, let's hear it. All right. So the first question is, what is your educational background? All right. Uh, this is a tough one. <laughs> uh, so... I went to elementary school, like P and preschool, I think. Yeah, I went to preschool and elementary school, and I graduated from middle school and high school, and dropped out of college in my first semester. That's pretty much it. All right. Uh, what's your most important skill or your strength that you possess? That is an excellent question. <laughs> it's kind um, of deep. You can think about it for a little bit. <laughs> Maybe we'll play the Jeopardy music. It's all right. Because the, the thing is, I just have, like, I don't even want to, I, I hate to brag about this, but it's I right. think there's some, like, I think I have a few unique traits that it's not just one that makes me special, in my opinion. It's just like, I have some Multiple? various ones. Any yeah. specifics or you don't want to? I think I'm probably the most spontaneous person I know. Spontaneous. So you'll just. And I just am. And the thing is, I embrace randomness mm -hmm. and it allows me to take ideas and just run with them and do things no one else would do because of it. All right. That, that was a very, very good answer. Wow. <laughs> and the other one, I, I think my biggest advantage I have over 99% of people that I know, it, and I, again, I, I don't want to brag, but I, if someone, if other people did this too, they would just have the same mindset mm -hmm. as me, or whatever you want to call it. It was definitely not the right word. Yeah, it's I hard. like whenever that. I have an idea, I write it down. Like anything I have. Mm -hmm. When let me, let me give you a little back background to this. All right, all right. And it's funny how I I remember this to this day. Yet I couldn't remember what I wanted to ask. Um, I was probably like four or something, nice. and. I was walking, like I'm in my house and my mom and dad are sitting on the couch area and I was walking out and I was going to ask them a question mm -hmm. and I just forgot what I was going to ask. And I was so upset. I was like <laughs> so mad that I forgot wow. what I was going to ask. And I still, like, I couldn't, I thought I remembered what it was, but the feeling was like, no, that wasn't what it is. And, then, and I still don't remember what I was going to ask, but I remember <laughs> that moment of forgetting. That's a very odd memory so yeah and so i think i have a fear of forgetting hmm. and so essentially i have billions of ideas yeah and then i write yeah. every single one of them down into this app i have called things mm -hmm. and which my friend recommended to me a few weeks uh, a few months ago and i used to just text myself but after i got this app it just like changed my life nice. and i just write down every idea i have like here, let me pull it out real quick. All right. Like, 
I want to start getting into a morning routine. So I put down a note for morning routine and I just created a whole thing for what I want it to be. Um, I write down everything I want to do today. So like I have three goals for this, for the day. Really well. I mentioned this, of course, so I don't forget about it. Hmm. And, and then if you keep scrolling, there's like 50 other tabs on here. Jeez. And <laughs> all right. Would you say like, you yeah. kind of think too much about like ideas. Cause like recently I was taking the ACT, you know, which is like the big college test that you have to do good on. And like the whole time I was just sitting there, I was like, I should be focusing on this test right now, but instead I'm just like thinking of ideas for the podcast. So like, do you right. think you're like that? Like during important times, you're just thinking about other things and your mind kind of wanders. Are you like that? 100%. It's, it's kind of annoying, but like I enjoyed it at the same time, but I don't know, man. Well, there's a weird psychology that I've realized behind it. Um, when you're do when you know you're supposed to be doing something and you know, you could be doing something else, mm -hmm. your mind just gets like euphoric thinking about something else. No feeling as if you're almost like rebelling against what you should be doing. It, mm -hmm. it just feels good yeah. in a way. It's really strange and it's kind of hard to dis like focus on something you don't really care about that much. Yes, that's all of school when I could be doing yes. other things that I actually enjoy that I want to pursue. But instead I'm sitting here taking a test and it's right. a test with very useless and pointless <laughs> questions that I'm never going to need to know ever again. I don't need to know how to prove a right triangle past high school mm -hmm. or college. And it's, it's so stupid, but I feel like something's got to yes. change with the school system, but I really don't know what, I don't know, man. I feel like it's, it needs to be more efficient, but I don't really know how. There, there are a huge number of things that need to change in the school system, and I've thought a lot about it, but that is for a whole other podcast, a whole <laughs> yeah. other time. Right, yeah, we got to get through these 10 questions. My teacher has to listen to this, so we should probably should keep this under like 20 minutes. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, well, this next question is just, how did you get your position? Mm. So how did you get to this position in life, maybe? Or how did you, how did you get to this position where you're a content creator, we'll say? How's that? Hmm. That is an excellent question. Is that also pretty deep? And you might take a little bit of thinking. I'll, I'll try to give you a, yeah, you a can, very it can be brief. basic answer if you want. Yeah, it can be um, brief. It's good. So I think I got to this point because when VEX ended for me in high school, which was the robotics program, yep. I kind of felt lost. I was like, I know VEX, if I just do VEX to you, I'm going to feel like I'm beating a dead horse. And, but everything else to me just didn't sound exciting hmm. or worthwhile working towards. And so going through fast forwarding to now, I've actually been through probably dozens of different ideas I had to what I thought I might want to do. And I would spend like a week and a half or so on each one of them. And until I would finally realize, no, that's, this is not for me. It's not something I would desire to become better at. And up until this point where, well, actually I've wanted to do several YouTube channels, but this one is different to me mm -hmm. and I've stuck with this for over a month now. And I feel a very consistent feeling of excitement for this one. So that's, this is where I'm at now. Nice. Nice. I can tell you really, you really do think about things. Wow. Like, <laughs> I, did I, did I not tell you I'm a deep when, I, in when I responded to that, like your comment was like, we should do a podcast sometime. And I was like, wow. I've never done one before. That's awesome. If you've got something, something, you got to, something to say, you just, you come let it out and you really, you have lots to say. <laughs> All right. Question four. What does a day in your life look like? Oh boy. A day in my life. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> They're never the same. That's all I have to say. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's what excites me about it. I, oh, I really hate so the, I really hate the life where it's just always the same, same yes. routine, same everything, Yes. which I think is why I kind of have not done a morning routine for a while, but as I, I'm like, well, what if I don't want to go to sleep at 1am this night or whatever? So, but anyways, um, mm -hmm. a day in my life, I wake up and honestly, right now I grab my phone and I'm on my phone for like. 20 to 30 minutes before I'm like, okay, it's time to get up Kyle. And, <laughs> but honestly, I think that's fine. Well, I think people put too much pressure that. on. Yeah. Everybody's I on think people right put away. too much pressure on 
not just relaxing for a little bit and just like get on the grind second you wake up Mm -hmm. if if you want to if you want to be successful that's the only way i kind of disagree with that now after because like if you just take a little bit to just chill when you wake up in the morning you'll feel like Mm -hmm. very happy with what you're doing and the rest of your day will feel nice i don't know like as long as you just don't get stuck there for four hours on your phone (laughs) <laughs> like for me personally like the first thing i do i wake up is i like like i go check like my inbox on youtube to see if i got a comment or something and if i got a comment that mm-hmm. that just makes my day like a lot better to be honest when i wake up knowing that somebody watched my content over the night and commented oh on yeah it. so dude. that's uh, i honestly i'm a little obsessed with checking my youtube statistics i'm trying to <laughs> not be so obsessed with yeah. it <laughs> but anyways so after i'm on my phone for a little bit i'll get up and i'll get ready for the day i'll put in my contacts i'll mm-hmm. put on some stuff on my face because i have like an acne issue kind of but it's not that bad anymore it used to be way worse <laughs> and then i also i don't take a shower in the morning i used to Ooh, why's uh, that i take yeah. one at, yeah, i take one at night instead yeah. so i think most people do one at night and morning but is there any reason why you don't do in the morning you just or what Yes, because I realized this was contributing to my acne problem. Oh, I There okay. was one point where I actually showered three times in a day <laughs> because I was, and it only made my acne worse, I finally realized, was because oh. I wasn't allowing my my body or my skin to kind of balance itself out and clean itself out rather than, because I was so paranoid about my skin being so clean so that it would go away but it was only yeah. making it worse it, that's a whole nother topic though yeah. all right, all right. so you talked about like you don't want to get caught in this constant cycle of doing the same thing every single day and like yeah i feel like that's how school was or how school is currently for me right now like right. i have this feeling and i just want school to hurry up and be over and i was like when i grow up like is working a nine to five job gonna feel the exact same yes it like, will oh, i can't I can't get myself to do that. Then I really don't want to do that. I would hate doing that so much. So. You don't have to. But man, what else would I do? <laughs> this is like for me personally. I really don't have many plans for when I graduate. Right now, I just like I'm very interested in like computers and technology and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like, and I, I kind of just well, want to make something new and help people. That's kind of that's kind of what I want to do, to be honest. But I don't know how. <laughs> right. Well, honestly, I could not give you an answer like a week ago. Um, mm-hmm. But I was searching for an answer a week ago, and now I have an answer. And essentially, there's so many ways that you can avoid that 9-to-5 job that you're not wanting to have in the future. Absolutely not. But it's not easy, of course. But Mm -hmm. nothing worth doing is easy, of course. Yeah. But the way I'm doing it, at least... And I think a lot of people could benefit from this strategy is I'm focusing on growing my personal image through like YouTube, Instagram, and just like kind of being like present in like the social Mm -hmm. media world because I want to be, it's fun. And I just want to kind of influence people to live a better life and stuff. So, but that's also helping me in a way as well, but also like by doing the YouTube channel included. And but also on the side, which I haven't told anyone about yet, I just started working towards building a passive income stream. So I believe that having multiple passive income streams is the one key way to establish financial freedom, (laughs) which will allow you to ultimately do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. So in case you're wondering, um, Right now, I'm doing Kindle publish, Kindle publishing, like making some books. Yeah. And also doing affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing, what's that? So affiliate marketing is really simple if you're a YouTuber. And you could do it as well. So mm-hmm. all you got to do is assign for, um, sign up for the Amazon affiliate marketing program, something like that. And you just type in your credit card information and stuff so that links to your bank account yeah and if you have one and then you just get links of a product you want to sell or promote and you put in like your youtube description and in the video you could say like oh so and you could review this pro like for example i have a canon m50 right Mm -hmm. 
and I I think it's a great camera. It's really good beginner camera. And as you can tell from my videos, it's pretty high quality. Yeah. So in my videos, I could be like, this is the camera I use. If you want to check it out, if you want to buy it, um, there's a link in the description if you want to buy it. So because I'm a partner with Amazon, I put a link that I get from their program into my description. Are there and any, if like... someone were to click on that link and buy the product within 24 hours, I will get a commission rate for that. Mm -hmm. Are there any like requirements you have to have to be able to like a certain amount of views that you have to get to be able to advertise products or do they just give it to like anybody? Literally anyone can do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose because if nobody clicks on your thing, then you don't make any money. So yeah. Right. All right the nice. only way you can get kicked out of it is if you don't sell like two or three products within six months. So <laughs> Jeez, two products in six depressing. months. That's yeah. All right. All right. Next question. Next question. Yeah. All I'm right. sorry. It's, it's yet another deep one. It's what oh, do you God. perceive as your biggest weakness? Mm. Anything specific? Like, constantly thinking too much or is that one of your weaknesses i think that's kind of one of mine to be honest my great my gr that used to be mine i got over that i'll explain that in a minute <laughs> um um my greatest weakness i don't want to call it weakness but i think some would consider it is my compassion for other people what <laughs> that's a weakness like yes they say love is a weakness because if you because you could they say like you could accomplish more if you didn't care what other people care about other people or some things like you could be a mm -hmm. like i wouldn't call it a weakness though but in a way some people would consider it a weakness no, like kind of. <laughs> i won't do certain things that might benefit me or help me to reach my next level because i'm a like i don't want to hurt other people's feelings or do things that people wouldn't find whatever or even mm -hmm. if they do, even if they don't know i'm doing something bad just i would feel guilty about it yeah, so I, mean, I wouldn't really count that much of a weakness but hey but honestly that's the only weakness i could think of like maybe like <laughs> maybe like a scumbag would count that as a weakness because he's used to taking advantage of people but i don't know <laughs> i guess um but like i'm not saying i consider that a weakness but some people would, think yeah. that maybe i want to say my slight arrogance might be a weakness but i don't i think i've been gotten better at nullifying that because i i'm trying i don't know <laughs> i realize i think i'm i think i perceive to some people as i'm a little too full of myself all right but yeah. i try i'm really trying not to <laughs> it's just hard yeah, <laughs> like, it is. it's just hard for me all right all right Question. If I'm being completely honest. Question six. <laughs> All right. It's kind of another deep one. All right. When, yeah. you, when you were young, how did you imagine yourself as an adult? My literally exactly like my dad. Oh. Like what's your dad do? He So, but not in a good way. Like I just oh. kind of thought because I was his son and I kind of looked like him, I would look exactly like him and be <laughs> exactly exact like thing. him. Because I was <laughs> And I was just like a stupid young boy, but um, <laughs> it, it was really, I don't know. I thought I was going to have the same exact like back problems and like, skin <laughs> problems. <laughs> it, was, it was the most stupid thing ever, honestly. Right. <laughs> that's how you pictured yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's honestly how I pictured myself. What's he do for a living? He's the owner of a pool company, actually. Pool company. All right. All right. It's called Pool Builders Incorporated. <laughs> there we go. Shot. I'll look that up later. <laughs> yeah, there's a oh, plug-in no. right there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this could lead into the next question then. Like, All right. Who was your biggest role model growing up? <laughs> oh, Growing up? Well, Besides I'd say I have more growing. role models in the past year than I've had my entire life. Like, yeah. I, don't, I never really had a role model previous to about a year ago. Hmm. Um, so, but I would say my biggest role models... I can't really give you one, um, yeah, but like name a couple. Mr. Beast, PewDiePie, yeah. Dean Graziosi, Tony Robbins, Alex Costa, go. David De Los Morenos, and Charlie Hooper, are, and Alpha M. Those are probably my biggest role models. <laughs> well, I, I knew the first two. After that, I was I just know Mr. Beast and PewDiePie. After that, I was lost. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, Gary V. You like him? 
Oh, Gary V too. I can't <laughs> forget him. I don't know why. I haven't listened to a lot of him, but doesn't he just like hate the school system or something? Or... Oh yeah. I mean, he's smart. He's smart. <laughs> yeah, I'll look him up after this. I'll learn some more about him. We'll see. All right, all right. On to the next question. Where do you see yourself in ten years? Oh, I have no idea. That's the best part. <laughs> That's the best part. That's kind of how I feel. <laughs> uh, I I I want to imagine, but like in ten years, I like. It's I'm looking up thing. at my ceiling right now. I'm like, I can't even see it, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a long, so much changes in 10 years. All right. Yeah, it's, but it's I, it just, I just look up and I smile. That's all I can see. <laughs> all right, all right. If you could go back in time and change one thing, what would it be? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. No regrets? Nothing? I I have I have a no regrets I mean, well, policy now. Yeah. Well, um, But... Realistically, if I were to go back and change one thing, it would definitely be at Vex the Vex World <laughs> Championship. Um, you don't you won't understand this one, but some people will. I got picked by somebody and I could have denied and picked someone else and I probably could have won my division. But yeah, I just made a wrong decision that basically chose my fate for the world championship. <laughs> well, if that's your so. only regret. Wow. Good for you. <laughs> a lot of people would have a lot bigger answers. Oh, but take it. That's trust good. me. I, you see, I have a ton of regrets. I could name so many different regrets, mm-hmm. but the thing is, I don't really consider them regrets other than that one. Just like learning um, experiences, or yeah, just learning experiences. Mm-hmm. I, I, I always viewed them as regrets, but now I, I see them as a chance to improve. So, mm-hmm. all right. Well, last question. What is your best piece of advice to young leaders like myself? Be self-aware. self-aware. Be aware and learn learn from your mistake. Like constantly realize what you're like messing. Like mm-hmm. what you're not doing as good as you could be doing. Yeah. And like monitor yourself and improve yourself. And- but don't like criticize yourself to the point where Ooh. you hate yourself. I think I kind of have do a it out of criticizing myself too much i kind of have a problem with that to be honest like i constantly like like uh, a lot of videos i make i just like hate them i'm bored watching them sometimes and like i don't think Mm -hmm. they're gonna do good at all and i just feel bad about it but yeah i definitely struggle with that not liking what i do enough which Mm. sucks that's kind of another weakness of mine i'm not like confident with what i do which i could definitely prove yeah well that's a huge part of it you gotta you got to kind of love yourself and I'm not saying, I'm not trying to sound arrogant when I say that you, cause you got to love yourself and you have to love others too. Like mm-hmm. that's how Gary V describes it. He's like, I, he says he's fully in love with himself, but he also loves everyone else too. And you just got to appreciate, it's got to treat yourself like another person, but also know that it's not another person, you know, mm-hmm. like critique yourself. Like it's yourself but love yourself like you're another person. Uh-huh. All right, all right. Well, I just thought of that one on the spot. So. <laughs> that was nice. All right. Well, all right, I'm going to close it up for that part. All right. Well, that's our interview with Kyle Ferrari. Thank you for those answering those questions. Yeah, no, anytime, not, man. That got very carried out, to be honest. There's no way my teacher's going to listen to that whole thing, but I'll make <laughs> like a summary video. <laughs> There's no way anybody <laughs> else's video is going to be that in-depth. They're going to be like three minutes long. But <laughs> thanks for those answers. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm – yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's really awkward. You got any other topics you want to ask me or you want me to start the next one? Um, I got nothing at the moment, so go ahead. All right. Your history of gaming. How did you get to Black Ops 2? When did you start? All right. That's a great question. Did you have a similar childhood to all of us? <laughs> That's what Probably I want to know. Probably not, honestly. Really? My parents were very overprotective, mostly my mom, and they didn't want me playing shooter games for a while. Mm-hmm. Until my first shooter game ever was Uncharted 3 on PlayStation. All right, I never played and it. And but... yeah, there was if you never played Uncharted, you didn't have a childhood. Oh, um, oh rip. <laughs> I had other games. That, <laughs> honestly, that was Uncharted was such a great game. But anyways, moving on, my first I finally got an Xbox at one point cuz more of my friends had Xbox. Mm-hmm. So I migrated from PlayStation to Xbox and I wanted to get modern warfare 3 and but the thing is uncharted 3 was like a teen rated game and it wasn't that gory or anything 
still a shooter game. And but Modern Warfare was of course like real war and more violent and stuff. Yeah. So my mom didn't want me to get it. And I'm not proud of this, but like <laughs> the only reason I got it was because oh. I started like begging and crying to get <laughs> oh, it because I wanted it so badly. But I, I don't know how we did it, but me and my brother somehow like when we were like like very young, we uh, persuaded our parents to get us GTA San Andreas somehow. Mm-hmm. And then it came on Christmas and we wanted to play it so early. Like we opened it during the middle of the night so <laughs> so we could play it the next day. And then we blamed it on our little brother, said he opened it. So we got to play that. So we got to play GTA a day early. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really think dude, that's like my parents are also pretty protective. They aren't a big fan like the shooter games. But I just don't really think they know enough about them. That's why they got us GTA. They really didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> no. Yeah, GTA is probably not the good one. <laughs> and we were probably like eight two when we got it. Played so on PS two. Oh my god. <laughs> it had to happen. So but anyways, after Modern Warfare three, I ended up getting Black Ops two. Mm-hmm. and that's when it all began and that's when, yeah. black ops 2 was just such an amazing experience <laughs> it was so good dude oh my god if Jeez. if there's anything that stayed consistent with my entire life so far is i love to grind like i love to grind <laughs> i had every i think i ended up getting every single diamond camo there was in black <laughs> ops <go>. 2 and <laughs> shotguns i saw on zombies that's your rank yeah, See. well, actually, if I'm being honest, in Zombies, that was a hacked rank because oh, oh. <laughs> my my friend, um, he had a thing to hack. I forgot what it was called, yeah. but he hacked the game and he just gave it to me, even though I didn't want it. He just kind of, he was like, here you go. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll take it. So are you more of like multiplayer zombies? Did you ever play zombies back in the day? Oh, I played the hell out of zombies back <laughs> there we in go. the day. There we go. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> uh, I origins was my favorite i think yeah and i did that easter egg like three times with my one friend mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was always so much fun and then did you keep going to black ops 3 too did you like that game i did play black ops 3 not as much as i played black ops 2 mm-hmm. mostly because i was involved in vex and <laughs> it kind of took over my life yeah and the thing is i think the reason for that and i think I have a trait that's most might consider a problem, but it's also one that my friend researched and told me is probably one of the key traits that a lot of successful people have is that I'm extremely obsessive with one thing at a time. <laughs> like I'm never all over the place. I'm always like laser focused on one thing <laughs> and it allows me to concentrate all my energy into one thing and just kind of make something better than it would be if i was doing a million other things at once yeah so for however many years you just grinded vex that was your main focus yeah and (laughs) it had pretty good results in my opinion (laughs) two time back to back state champ (laughs) yeah let's eat and uh (laughs) but in call of duty i oh oh did you ever play destiny no (laughs) oh I won't be that, able to that's where the real grind began uh, my friend oh uh, shoot no nope. oh my oh, i was just Destiny. caught in dungeon defenders <laughs> Death. i never played dungeon <laughs> defenders what was that like uh well it's just like basically you just pick like you're you're either a wizard a monk or like a squire and you mm-hmm. just you just fight off like monsters that's about it and you like defend crystals <laughs> it's a very basic game there's not much yeah. to it, but me and my friends just Kinda loved like it. Kind of like Minecraft. It's, it's like back in the day, I was obsessed with just like hacking stuff. So I modded mm-hmm. the game and I got us a bunch of cool weapons and we just loved it. <laughs> Which also led to the, I... the banning of my first Xbox 360 account was because I hacked and like got myself like a, a free gamer emblem thing that was like a dollar and I got it for free. And I got banned forever. So <laughs> that led to the downfall. I remember when I played uh, Pokemon, I don't know if you ever played Pokemon. <sighs> no. <laughs> Oh, all right. This has been a great podcast, guys. It's been a lot of I'm fun. I'm exposing myself. God. Um, yeah, this this was a lot of fun, but I don't I I just got to go now. Me. It's can't getting a little late. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. I don't know. I might have on the old Game Boy, but I might not remember. But I don't know. Oh, it, oh I definitely got to go now. He doesn't even remember. It. <laughs> no, but anyways, when I played Pokemon, I grind... I, I don't know why I'm this. I'm realizing that I really did love to grind. Um, yeah. 
when I finally beat the game and I had everything you could possibly want in the game, I was like, all right, now let's put the action replay in and play it again. And then like do all the crazy things like hacking the game and going through walls and stuff. Hmm. And cause I just never wanted it to end, but. All right. Nice. Okay. Wait. All right. I got some quick fire questions here for you on all right. gaming. All right. Best COD, which is black ops Two. best zombies map. Or definitely Origins. All right. Thoughts on the current state of YouTube? Oh. This could um, be. <laughs> no. I think it's... I think it's very difficult to become a big YouTuber at this point. Yeah, but I think if you're the right person, it's not, it's not nearly impossible. It's really hard to stick you, out. But it's really hard to stick out. But if you're a very... If you're an anomaly, you, you'll mm -hmm. stick out somehow. Yeah, like, in my opinion like mr beast and like, Jesus. what's that like mr beast he really sticks out like no oh way. yeah, yeah. mr beast he <laughs> he and david dobrik too yeah he's, he's um, pretty good but he laughs too much <laughs> yeah that's my one critique <laughs> yeah he i noticed that one time i was watching his videos and i, I was listening i heard his laugh after a few clips i'm like okay let's listen does he do is that after every single yes, clip every single every <laughs> two like seconds answers, big yes <laughs> and sometimes i wonder if he just sticks like a laughing yeah. audio over actually, it i think he's been accused of doing that but <laughs> i actually think he but has i still like his content it's very yeah, different and like, unique he'll so. get like three famous people on and he'll call the title like driving through a car wash or whatever <laughs> yeah there's three famous people in the video it's really interesting mm -hmm. all right but back to like the state of youtube i think it's definitely the hardest it's ever been to get involved but i still think it's very possible if you're if you really care about it enough and you really put yourself out there for who you really are and just do what you want to do yeah like if your goal is not to make money off youtube and just to become famous or something then I think you can definitely succeed, but it will take some time still, mm -hmm. as anything worthwhile does. Yeah, that's that's the one thing that all the big YouTubers will tell you is just stay consistent and keep uploading, even if like nobody's watching. You just gotta keep going, and eventually yeah, you'll have take that it one from video. All the big YouTubers, guys, <laughs> you'll have that one video. All right, your first console. I think the Wii was my first console. <laughs> if that counts, <laughs> that definitely counts. That's every. That's probably like everybody. Mine might be the Game yeah. Boy, but oh. yeah, that's console. Yeah, the, yeah. Wii, the Wii was some Wii, good stuff. Wii days were so much fun, not going to lie. Super Mario Galaxy, did you play that? Oh, Let's yeah. Let's go. Let's we go. finally have something in common. <laughs> yes. Now that's my childhood right there. Oh, my God. Super Mario Galaxy was, <laughs> it was the best. The game was, it was so, so good. good. Like, it was ahead of its time. It was so good. It, it, yeah, it, it, was, it was ahead of its time, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, that game would be good today. Like, it's it crazy. Be graphics were slightly improved it'd be it'd be amazing if they if the graphics were slightly better and they released it today it would still be a I, great I'd, play, game. I'd buy it in a heartbeat definitely yeah for real <laughs> all right uh all right. what's your favorite console hmm i'd have to say xbox one i have xbox, all, all right. i have probably my most that's an unpopular most, opinion <laughs> yeah it's not because of the console is the greatest itself, but like all the memories I probably had on Xbox One were the best. Yeah, that's why I take the Xbox 360 as my favorite, basically just because all the memories, it's the one I grinded the most on. So. Yeah, honestly, I can't really, I have to say Xbox 360 and Xbox One. Mm -hmm. I can't really, because it's not, it's not about the console itself. It's about like the, <laughs> the I don't know. Yeah, just, the, as, yeah. I had so many great memories on Xbox 360 as well. All right, uh. Well, how, the current state of Fortnite. <laughs> what do you think about that? Do you used to grind I mean, Fortnite. I, haven't, Did you? I, I played Fortnite like once oh. a few weeks ago, and but the thing is, I only played it because what I was because you know how I said I was going through a bunch of different things in my life and seeing yeah. what I liked, what I might want to continue with, what I, what I might not, mm -hmm. and I was working on this other YouTube channel, and. I, I was like getting the feeling of like, oh, I want to, I just want to take a break and do something else. So I just felt like playing some Fortnite for some reason. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> and funny enough, that's how this channel was born. Oh, so. let's go. See, Fortnite does good things. <laughs> yes. And it was the only time I played Fortnite in the past few weeks. But it, and I played for the entire day because I'm like, 
that's see that's the spontaneous side of me i do things very spontaneous but then they lead to yeah. other things that you wouldn't expect to come out of it mm -hmm. and that that's what i what like i think is my one of my greatest qualities is that i just do shit that i feel like doing and it it just yeah. creates new things that's awesome and we wouldn't be talking right now if i didn't play yeah, fortnite <laughs> Did you play back in like 2017 when it first came out or no? Um, I I was a little late to the train. I think I did play in 2017. It's crazy to think it was that long ago. Yeah, I know. I already have nostalgia but for that I, somehow. I I definitely didn't play it in the first few months, I think. I think I was, again, being a little bitch and I mm -hmm. didn't want to be part of the hype train just to not be part of the hype train. <laughs> And I, I hopped that type on the hype of train. <laughs> yeah, I sh I should have hopped on the hype train, but I I've learned. Like I said, you, you yeah. just gotta learn from. Like honestly, mistakes. to me, OG Fortnite was like one of the best gaming experiences ever. Like just getting yeah. your squad on every night and just grinding. It was so much fun. <laughs> I mean, even when I played a few months later, it was still like, yeah, honestly, it was so much fun. And then as time passed, it got way worse. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad now. It's it's tolerable, but it's not very good. There's just too many good players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody. I think that's the main issue. Everybody's got Twitch in their name. It's terrible. <laughs> and then everyone, they hear a bullet and five miles yeah. away in the skyscraper. So. <laughs> yeah, so that's accurate. All right. What's who? You have a specific favorite YouTuber, or is it just multiple? That is an excellent question. But if I had to say my favorite YouTuber. I think Mr. Beast is probably my favorite YouTuber. Hmm. Just all the good work he does. Or are you trying to like? Something... I think he's just. Yeah. I think he's my biggest inspiration. Yeah. And even though he's not my, like, I have a lot of YouTubers that I watch that are for like self improvement and stuff that I appreciate the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't watch them just because their content's entertaining. I watch it because I want to learn. Yeah. And they're still one of my favorite YouTubers. But realistically, I think Mr. Beast is probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. He's just a little bit of both. He, you want to kind of be like him and do good in the world. That's why I like him. I want to do do the things he does. I, I love doing... If you can't tell from my personality, I, I, I think I kind of sound like the type of person who likes to do crazy shit spontaneously <laughs> and stuff. And he just he's just kind of living the life that I, that I would enjoy. Like mm -hmm. he just does crazy shit with his friends. He gives away money to people who start crying <laughs> after. Yeah. And he just gives back to everybody. It's just, it's yeah, just so much fun. It's the lifestyle like, a lot of people want, but like very few strive to get it, I think. And I mean, that's yeah, kind of how I want to be, but I don't know. It's not easy, but I'm aware it's not easy. I don't really care. I'm going to get it no matter what. <laughs> so. Just got to keep grinding. Yep. Right. I'm only at the beginning. I'm I'm yeah. like a month not even a month in. So Yeah, I started grinding like three weeks ago. So <laughs> Yeah. Alright. Uh you got an opinion on Logan Paul? <laughs> yes. Um I actually think he's improved. Yes. Greatly, um, I also agree. <laughs> he I watched his <laughs> I was watching a podcast um with him and Josh Peck. Mm -hmm, like yeah. I think it was a year ago or two years ago. I don't know. But and it was so obvious how like bad he was as a person. Like it's just so <laughs> easy to critique him and like make fun of him, which is like horrible to say, but it was just so easy. And it's just, yeah. just he was just so insecure and like so, like the thing is you just toot his horn for like one second. He's like, yeah, well, yeah, what was that? We said, what was yeah. that you said? And it was, like, <laughs> yeah, it was like, so easy to get on his good side just by like boosting his ego. It was so the funny. Thing about like Logan Paul to me is like. He might still be like a bad person, but at the end of the day, he, he's a good entertainer. And I like I look forward to his videos, to be honest. I really enjoy them. So mm -hmm. I guess I well, I think I think he's gotten a lot better as a person, honestly. I think the best thing that's ever happened to him was him losing to KSI. And I think it's humbled him quite a bit. I haven't seen his videos in the past week or few days or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the one I saw from like a month ago or a few weeks ago... He seemed a lot more humble and like not so arrogant as he usually seems. Yeah. So yeah, he's definitely I'm changed. proud to see that actually. I really like his new videos to be honest, but yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, Oh, I got one more question. All uh, right. Did you make your new like YouTube channel icon? Did you like just make that? Yeah. It's like, I, I could use one. So, <laughs> cause like the one I, I just... have right now uses like copyrighted images. 
so i was wondering oh i mean i used to do that i usually do that for all my thumbnails and stuff so yeah i need a new thumbnail like so you made that yourself <laughs> yeah i just went on photoshop and Ooh, photoshop. i just took this uh font called colors of autumn that my friend showed me a million years ago and i'm like all mm -hmm. right let's put k and f together and there we go and let's copy trap nation with the dots around it <laughs> and um yeah, well, and then good. i just messed around with some and I messed around with some gradients till I accidentally stumbled upon this color scheme. No, like I wasn't even good. going for this. And then it just, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, that looks cool. Don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. Cause I didn't even know how I made it. <laughs> so nice. I just left it. All right. Well, anything else you want to say? That's pretty much all I got written down to ask you. So um, any final remarks or anything? Or no. Can... I'm definitely going to think of something right. the second this is over. All right. but, um, <laughs> All right, well, well that's, that's about it. We're at an hour about exactly. So I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for yep. coming on, dude. I hope, hope we can do another one in like a couple months or so because you definitely have a lot more to say. And I'm interested to hear what you got to say. Is, is your real name Smitty, by the way? No, my real name's Dalton. I'm, oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry well, it was, it was that, good talking to you, That's Dalton. just a nickname. Yeah, thanks, dude. Uh, uh, link to your channel down in the description if anybody wants to go check that out. You make some pretty awesome yeah. content. I, dis I definitely I, I'm suggest I'm only it. dropping fire content from now on. All my other videos are trash. <laughs> That's it. Go check them out. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned. Subscribe for... to Schmitty058. Let's go. Episode 3 on the way. Peace out. <laughs>